Hey guys, what's up? It's Alec Torelli. Welcome back to an episode of The Hand of the Day where we're going to be analyzing the key hand in the 2019 World Series of Poker main event between Dario San Martino and Ensan. Heads up for it all right here on The Hand of the Day. Hand of the Day. Thanks for being here, guys. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications because there's more awesome content coming your way from the main event, reviewing the biggest, most epic hands here all on this channel. So let's jump in. First off, I'm traveling. I'm in Napa Valley, so I'm sorry for this crazy uh, background and whatever, but I really wanted to drop this hand and get my thoughts on it because I was asked a million times about this hand from you guys. So this is the key hand in the main event. Heads up here. Let's take a look. The blinds are 2 million, 4 million and with a four million big blind ante. And San wakes up with two kings on the button and opts to open to 11 million. Now normally in heads up, especially when the stacks are shorter, like you can see here, San Martino has 160 million, so about 40 big blinds effective. Typically here you're gonna see min raises or 2.2x opens with stacks these short. But when there's a big blind ante, there's so much more dead money in the pot that I like two and a half, three X as an opening size, even though the stacks are shorter. So good open by Ensan over to San Martino in the big blind with eight, four suited. Now here, I think he has a clear call. You, you might be wondering like, well, his hand is so bad. Why would we play something like eight, four suited? But you have to think about the odds that he's getting, right? The pot is already 11 million plus 4 million plus 4 million plus 2 million and he has to call a measly 7 million. So he's getting three to one. He's definitely gonna have enough equity versus the range of hands that the button is gonna be opening with. If he thinks he has a post-flop edge as well, he could maybe have even less equity to justify calling. So I think this hand is definitely be playable. Now you wanna adopt a three betting range in the big blind with some bluffs, but I don't really love this hand as a as a bluff. I think it's better just to play it as a call. And I think overall in this situation, Dario's style is much more likely to call here. He had been playing a low variance style, and I think he believes he has a heads up advantage. He's very experienced as a heads up player. And so in general, in that situation, I think you're going to want to take lower variance lines, see more flops, and not like beef up the size of the pot and increase variance with three bets with these types of hands. So I think this plays into Dario's overall strategy and heads up, which I like and I'm in favor of. He calls and let's take a flop. With a pot of 26 million, the flop comes down 10-6 deuce with two spades, giving San Martino a flush draw and of course, over pair for Ensan. San Martino checks, totally standard, really not much to say about this. He's gonna be checking here pretty much 100% of the time. Over to Ensan, who has a very clear bet. The only question here is how much. I think in these spots, typically you're gonna see bet sizing on drier boards be smaller. The reason for this is that the button's range is very wide, and he's gonna want to be c-betting post-flop with all types of hands, especially on a dry board like 10-6 deuce that favors the button's range. There's not many hands the big blind can continue with. A lot of the big blind's hands are going to have to fold. And so the button's going to have incentive to bet often. When you're betting often, you want to choose a small size to give yourself a good price on your bluffs. Something like a third of the pot is typically what is like a GTO, game theory optimal, bet size in a situation like this with your whole range, meaning you're gonna bet your bluffs like queen jack, as well as your over pairs like two kings so that your opponent can never really figure out what hand you have. Over to Insan who opts to bet 15 million, which is more than half the pot. This is a beefy bet size here. And so I think exploitatively, it's hard to read into these sorts of things, but if I were San Martino in the big blind, I would feel like, he's likely to have something a little bit more often just because he bet a little bit bigger. And if he had air, he'd probably bet like 8 million here just because the difference in bet size doesn't really change the big blinds calling range. If San Martino has a 10, he's going to call regardless of the bet size. If he has a 6, he's going to call regardless of the bet size. So when he bets bigger here, I feel like psychologically what I would be thinking is he probably wants me to call. He's probably just trying to exploit me and go for max value, build up this pot because he has something. So over to San Martino in the big blind, who I think has a very clear call. While you could argue for a check raise if the situation were different, you know, leaving aside the exploitative fact that we, we maybe assume that Ensan has a bigger hand just because of his bet size. 
But in general here, you want to consider your stack to pot ratio when deciding whether or not to check call or check raise. Now, this is a co topic I cover a lot more in the membership at Conscious Poker. We actually have an entire course on this sort of subject, so you can get access to that at the link below. Uh, there's a free trial available as well. So if you want more about how to play these sorts of complex situations, highly recommend you check that out. For now though, in general, you don't want to check raise and be in a spot where you have to fold if you get jammed on. So with a bet of 15 million, if Dario makes it 40 million and his opponent jams, now Dario has to fold out all of his equity, which is terrible when you have such a strong hand like a flush draw. You can see here he has 40% equity. You don't want to you want to realize that equity, and the best way to realize that is by calling. Now, if San Martino had less money, like 70 million, 60 million, then I would definitely check raise here because you want to use leverage and get fold equity along with realizing all of your equity and you want to put all the money in so that you can see the rest of the cards and hope that your opponent folds a hand that he might jam the turn with if you just check call. So if he had something like queen jack or something like that or a six, you want to jam so that he folds those hands and that you actually win the pot. So a lot here depends on the stack sizes, but San Martino has too big of a stack size to check raise. I love his call, which he does. Let's take a turn where things go down. The turn comes a nine of clubs, and here San Martino opts to check again. We could get into some leading strategy here from San Martino. Maybe he can lead here as a bluff, representing 10, 9, 7, 8, or 9, 6. Not going to go too much into that. I think checking is like the default line here. Most people are going to check. You really can't go wrong by just always checking in this spot, right? Your range is always balanced if you just always check. If you do adopt a leading strategy, you're going to have to mix in some value hands like 10, 9, 7, 8, and 9, 6, as well as slow played sets on the flop, along with some bluffs like this one. That could be a good strategy if you do want to lead turns like these. San Martino checks over to Ensan, who has a very clear bet. Sure, the turn did fill in a straight or maybe make some weird two pairs, but you have kings. You have to bet here. You can get value from a float like 9-8, 9-7, you get value from like 6-7, 6-8, and value from all the 10x hands, which are the most likely hands that your opponent has, top pair, like 10-8, jack-10, queen-10, king-10, ace-10, all these 10x hands that you want to get value from. So it's really important here to bet if you are Ensan, and I think choosing a decent sizing makes a lot of sense. While on the flop, when you bet, you're repping a very wide range of hands because you're going to want to see bet the flop pretty much always. When you bet the turn, you're actually repping a pretty narrow range of hands. You're basically saying, I have a strong 10 that wants to get value, or I have a better hand than that, which is rare, especially heads up. Or you have a combo draw like queen jack, or just maybe like a random draw like ace eight that's just betting with equity to get a six or some deuce or or a hand to fold. So when you're repping less hands and you're actually saying, I have a very strong hand or air, you typically want to choose a bigger sizing because you're not betting as often, contrary to what it is on the flop. So Ensan bets 33 million here, which is a play I really like. It's a decent bet, like more than half pot. I like this bet size here. Over to San Martino, who's in an interesting spot. He's almost getting direct odds here to call. And if you add up the fact that he maybe has some implied odds, like if he hits his gut shot, he can lead out and maybe get value or get value on a random spade. I think he can't fold this hand, right? So the question isn't whether or not he should continue in the hand, but what is the most optimal line to make the most money long term? Again, in poker, it might sound simple, but you have to remember, you're not looking for a profitable play, you're looking for the most profitable play. So calling and raising are both gonna be profitable, but which one is better? Well, calling you basically break even, right? You're just realizing your equity, but raising actually is a great play in a spot like this. You wanna pick hands that are strong semi-bluffs to raise with because you can get your opponent to fold hands that you can't win against at showdown. Let's say Insan has something like Queen Jack. If you check call and the river comes a blank, you're gonna lose this pot, right? You're, you're gonna get bluffed off the hand, maybe even you hit a four and you check, your opponent jams, you have to fold, so you get bluffed off the best hand or you just don't win at showdown because your opponent has a random bluff that beats your eight friggin' high. So here by raising, you get all your opponent's combo draws and all your opponent's equity to fold. Maybe your opponent even makes a hero fold with a hand that he's betting for value. Maybe he's betting like 
a jack-10 type hand or queen-10 just to get value. But maybe he lays that down against a raise. So whereas you would lose the pot against that hand if you check call, you win the pot against those hands if you check raise. So I actually love this raise by San Martino here, and I think it's really important to keep in mind that you have to be balanced in spots like these. You can't just only raise with two pair or a straight or better, otherwise your opponent's going to have an easy decision against you. He's going to play very well. So the optimal strategy in spots like these is to always, just like any spot, adopt a balanced range. You want to choose your bluffs wisely, pick the ones that have the most amount of equity, which combo draws fall into that category, like this one, and then check jam here with hands for value, like 10-9, like 9-6, like 7-8, maybe a, a flopped set that decided to trap, like sixes or deuces. So I think this is a great play. There are a lot of hands that San Martino could have for value, and there aren't that many bluffs. So I think it's good to have some small combination of bluffs. This is a perfect one to choose. If you actually remember the hand he played against Livingston where he busted him, uh, he actually took a very, very similar line. Livingston ironically had the exact same hand that Ensan had, had kings, and San Martino check calls the flop, and then he checked jams all in on the turn with two pair. Now, this is the mark of great players. It's easy to check raise all in with two pair when you when you have it, but it's also important to be able to check raise all in with these combo draws because that's what makes you a next level caliber player. It's what makes you difficult to play against. The fact that you could be bluffing in spots like these. So San Martino goes all in. Guards, he would not He said all in. Yeah. He did jam. And he gets a snap call. Oh, wow. This could be it right here. Now over to Ensan, who tanks for a long time before finally calling with the two kings. Nope, just kidding. He took about a third of a second. Dario San Martino needing help. He's got 12 outs, but Hossein Ensan one clean card away from a championship. Suddenly, the bluff, semi bluff shove. It could be the first time the main event has been won with pocket kings. Dyer left to just shake his head and hope he gets lucky to extend this. And he would take the king of spades here, along with any other spade or a seven. Other than that, it is over. And I think this... I mean, a lot of people ask me about this spot, like, why did he call so quickly? And one thing I'd like to highlight, while I would recommend always taking your time just to reevaluate, maybe just evaluate any of the reads that you get in real time, you have to remember, in a big spot like this, when you're betting the turn with two kings and putting in, you know, a fourth of your opponent's stack on the turn, you're betting with a plan. So good players always have a plan. They know what they're going to do if they face any situation that arises. So when Ensan, before Ensan bets, when he decides to bet this turn, he's saying to himself, I'm going to bet call this turn, meaning I'm going to bet this turn and then value bet any river or bet this turn and call if my opponent jams. So it's important to have that decision made before you bet because you want to make sure you're, you're prepared for all the possible scenarios. So I can't blame Ensan for calling here right away. He knew what he was going to do if Dario jammed. And credit to him, he set up the play well, he did play the hand perfectly, I think calling here totally makes sense, especially heads up where you do beat a lot of combo draws against a capable player like San Martino. Congrats to both finishers, they both played amazing epic heads up battle, hope you enjoyed this. If you want more epic content from us, highly recommend checking out the membership at Conscious Poker, again free at the link below, I'm reviewing a, some of the hands from the main event in there as well as hands that I played during the main event as well. So a lot of tournament strategy in there. Check it out. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel. More awesome contents coming from the main event. I'll see you in the next one.